everyone. I'm Dr. Lisa Piper here with Wendy Cohn Osborne. We are the founders of Code Health and the C3 Podcast. We are very excited today to invite two lovely, beautiful queen goddess people that have our heart right from hello, Colette Schnabel and Violetta Markaloo. We met you beautiful women at the Biohackers Expo in Miami. And then we reconnected yet again at the mansion with Hofi Golan and Alvaro Nunez. And we really connected. And it sounds like we're on this mission together that really resonates. So the two of you have a company called Futuri Femme. Tell us about that. It is beautiful, the synchronicities and how our frequencies did just resonate from the moment that we met. And the same kind of went with myself and Violetta. You know, we have not known each other that long. And we met just through the biohacking circle. Actually, I was the MC of the Biohacking Congress in Miami last October. And I had seen her in the crowd. You know, she is a stunning woman. And I was just drawn to her. And we met for a lunch one day. And we were like, you know what? There, we need to do a, an event for women, a women-focused, science-based event. Because here in Miami, I feel that there's a lot of events, a lot, a lot more that are more into the wellness circle, that we're not really getting in, into the nitty-gritty of, you know, how to truly impact the journey a woman's life is on. Violetta and I, we had a perfect match, and to find a woman that can work on pace with you and that has a strength that holds their poise is not something that I find as easy or someone that can not feel a, a conflict, right? In, in ego. And Violetta and I just, we mold beautifully. And I'm just so thankful that we have met. And so I'll let Violetta share a little more of the vision of what Futuri Femme is. And I want to echo that and say thank you, Wendy and Lisa, for having us on. This is such a treat. We've been looking forward to this. So I met Colette at the uh, Biohackers Congress. I'd seen her around and was uh, formally introduced to her. And, you know, a couple of months later, we had met at the Four Seasons and, you know, just talked about all the events we have been to, biohacking and otherwise, and how, you know, women are, we're the minority. We're the minority as speakers. We're the minority in attendance. And there wasn't really an event that focused on women's health and like she said, they're really wellness events. I'm nothing wrong with that, but we really wanted to, you know, really promote the women in the space, the health leaders, really talk about, again, the nitty gritty and how our bodies work. So we said, you know what, this is, yeah, let's let's take a stab at this. I think we're both capable enough to do this. And we had, you know, we both had the sa same heart and the same vision. And like she said, I think it is a rare thing to meet another woman who is equally as driven and doesn't feel uh, doesn't feel threatened by you or you as competition but understands that you know collaboration over competition and you know two heads are a lot of times better than one so you know and if you want to bring astrology into it which I love to do where we're two air signs with earth ascendance and that means we are seeing things from a larger perspective, our sun signs are, but our ascendants are earth signs. So our, our feet are planted on the ground. And so we're just, uh, we don't have these pie in the sky ideas. We really bring those ideas down to earth. So I think that, yeah, cosmically, definitely a match. And Futuri Femme is all about, you know, you know, educating on women's health and bringing the women leaders in science, biohacking, wellness, entrepreneurs, all in one place, which shockingly has not been done yet in Miami. Well, we are very excited about it. Can't wait till you host the event. And, you know, just like the two of you, you're talking about two women working together, unified. Uh, it's very cohesive and it's very unique to find something like that in someone else as a partner. And Lisa and I each have been through our own journeys with other partners. And I have to say, when you find the right soulmate, 
especially in, you know, of course in life, but in business, it's, it's a marriage. It's essentially like a marriage. So you have to treat the partnership just as you would a marriage. And when you know from the beginning that you have a good foundation to work off of, whether it's Zodiac or just your, you, you know, your ability to do things and, and complete each other. It's what makes the most successful businesses that there are. But each of you together, you certainly are a powerhouse. But I would love to talk about each of you individually because you each have amazing backgrounds. And Colette, you are the biohacking mama, as you are known in the world of Instagram. So would you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got into biohacking? Yeah, absolutely. The name kind of just came out last year, actually, after attending one of Dave Asprey's conferences. And to be honest, it was really hard for me to niche down in my industry, you know, and I hated that term. You need to niche down. You know, how I came into biohacking uh, is really because I was suffering. I was extremely suffering from debilitating anxiety that, you know, it put me in hospitals at time. Ultimately, that just made me feel crazy. They were just like, oh, no, it's just anxiety. I'm like, no, no, this is way more than anxiety. Like I had phantom feelings within my body. I suffered, you know, just I was the person who was crying on airplanes, hyperventilating. Like this was a, an ongoing life thing. Not only was I suffering from extreme anxiety and this up and down waves of depression, but I started having developing this chronic pain after I had my son. I found biohacking when my son was about four years old. And it came because I had a mentor and I had already been working in the health and wellness space, more so understanding and teaching women about gut health and the toxicity of glyphosate and how it destroys our gut and it affects our children. And so one of my mentors, she knew a bit about my childhood. In a nutshell, I just, I had gone through, my parents went through extreme big divorce, huge custody battle. Ultimately, it put me in a foster care for six months. There was times in my childhood that love was given to me based off of things I would have to do or say. A little girl shouldn't have to go through, basically. Let's just put it at that. So my, my friend, she knew about my childhood and she took time to educate me, educate me that, you know, those traumas weren't my fault that those traumas can then actually manifest at a cellular level on an energetic level and that I could speak to my body through frequency medicine, through frequency therapy. At this time, I didn't believe in energy. I didn't know what the heck she was talking about. The words like chakra or aura, I was like, oh, I'm going to hell. I'm like, what are we, what are we talking about here? <laughs> and so it was a lot of unlearning that I had to do. And I had already spent thousands and thousands of dollars on holistic care, trying to get rid of this pain, trying to help this anxiety. And when I was introduced to frequency therapy, I saw an immediate change and I couldn't believe it. And so then I went down rabbit holes, quantum freaking rabbit holes. <laughs> you understand. I know that you ladies know what I'm talking about. And from that moment, I just fell in love. I fell in love with deeply ed the education that's provided in this biohacking and health optimization space. And I wanted to be a voice. I wanted other women. And because it's it's very common that majority of the, especially Western world, does not understand this yet. And that if I was suffering from all of that for so many years, there's millions of other people out there. And so, you know, my platform really is Biohacking Mama is to just educate, to continue to be a guinea pig, to try all of the things and, you know, figure out what works best for me, for my body, and teach people how these things are functioning and making the body work better. And then also how to do it uh, as a mom and for our children so that my children don't have to wait to their mid-30s for things to start arising to, to navigate. That's awesome. And Violetta, you are a health coach, and I love your stuff, man. I just want to say, like, art and photography and health and higher living and especially mental health. Tell us more what you do with House of V. Oh, yeah. 
So we all remember 2020. Yeah. So I was a working photographer and actually a DJ as well. And that was, I had a great, great career. I lived in Washington, D.C. You know, 2020 happened and both of my businesses went to zero. Uh, You know, both of my businesses are in person. I was not able to continue work uh, over Zooms or anything. So I picked up my camera and I started a series called Inbox Full. And I started photographing the small business and entrepreneurs that were in my community and how were they were trying to get through the pandemic. And that project actually came to me through a meditation. I had started meditating during the pandemic. I'd done it here and there before the pandemic, but then, you know, obviously I had tons of time and I said, okay, now you have the time. So I started five, 10 minutes a day. And I remember one of those days, I just, I had this vision of a face And then there was this bold text next to it. And one of my friends, she had a bakery and she asked me, Violetta, she said, you know, can you photograph me in front of my closed business? And I was like, okay, that's it. This is it. And I just picked up my camera. I just start calling everyone. I knew I said, would you allow me to photograph you in front of your closed business? And I'm going to record audio interviews because this is absolutely not being covered by the media. It was all about the health workers and there was nothing about small business in the news and how they were struggling. And I am a small business. I've been a small business all my life. So my photography work went from fashion portrait lifestyle, which was still in a way, you know, documenting transformation and self-development. But it really started to blend with mental health there because I was literally documenting and recording the mental health struggles of my community. So that happened. And I had a very long period of time without work. And I I just said, you know what, I, I know I have helped people just with conversations in the past, just, you know, help it to lift them up, you know, let me get some formal training. So I got a, I got certified as a life coach through Mind Valley, certified as a health coach through Institute for Integrative Nutrition, both I would highly recommend. And I started House of V because I knew that, you know, in this moment in time, I saw every, a lot of people struggling with their health, their mental health, and I knew I could help with all the things I knew. Growing up Greek, you know, we, food is medicine. Being in the biohacking space, doing all the things I did for myself since 2012. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to be quiet about what I'm doing. I'm going to start this website calling it House of V. And it's all the things that I've done in my own life, all of it encompassed all together. And it is the pursuit of higher living because when we're striving for something, it's a pursuit. It's not about the destination. This is my pursuit. And this is how I have achieved, obviously not optimal health, but the best I can be. And I hope it's a resource for other people wanting to also be in that pursuit. So whether they want to hire me as a health coach or just go to my website and get free resources, that's what it's there for. But, you know, I do bring my perspectives of my life in there. And that does include art because my work has blended with mental health and mental health is physical health. So, And art is a great way to express all of that, too. So it is in itself. Beautiful. It is. And your artwork is spectacular. I am so in awe of how you are able to capture all of these beautiful people in their own way. It, it's really lovely. So I recommend anybody to go to your website just to see your beautiful portraits and photography. I really do. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Of course. Of course. And, you know, Colette, going back to you, you know, you're a businesswoman an entrepreneur, and a mother. I'm a mother myself. My children are grown, but I I was a working mother back when my children were growing up. And in today's world, I really can't imagine bringing children up in today's world. I think that it is so much more difficult from what I see from an outsider's perspective now. So What are some things that you do that you could recommend to other women who are out there working, 
trying to establish themselves both as a mother and an entrepreneur. Yeah, that's really good. You know, I mean, my husband travels for work, you know, and when my children were little, it was like six to eight months away at a time, you know, and I called, we lived in a townhouse and I called like my, my concrete castle. <laughs> All my friends didn't have kids. And I was like, what? what am I doing? You know, like, what do I do now? And I had no community, nothing. And it was really an online community that supported me and helped coach me and pull this entrepreneur out. Um, and I did, I didn't want other mothers to, to struggle through that either. And so for me, um, you know, it's really to, to give a woman purpose, to give them their voices back, to give them their confidence. I, and I think that's really important because, Basically, what I do is I'm a storyteller. And so I want other people to become to find that they can be relatable with no matter what and that no matter what the story is, I mean, it's going to relate to somebody. And so giving one the confidence to come out of that shell, the confidence to move past those uncomfortable moments, because that's when greatness starts to happen and opportunities start to happen. So that's an important piece. But then, you know, as mothers and this outlet of actually being an entrepreneur like it was a freedom for me. It was a freedom for me to find who I am now. Like, because I'm no longer that older version of myself that traveled the world and worked aboard mega yachts and lived a crazy party lifestyle, work hard, play hard, 100%. And I'm like, who am I now? And so it's it's really helping women to see that. But then also in your regards of, you know, raising children in today and, you know, the biohacking is an important piece. And, and, living by example is what helps the children, right? My children are little biohackers. Like we were driving home this past weekend and my daughter has an upset tummy. She's like, I think I need that red thing on my tummy. You know, she's like talking about her, the flex beam. She's like, she wants Look. the red light, you know, like on her belly. And, you know, and so my children know, like they ask for the drops. Like they know that those things help them. And I'll listen to like conversations while they're having breakfast or something. And my son's like, you know, we made it a stardust. And I was like, yeah, that's right. You know, like he's talking about hydrogen. You know, he's like, you know, we're making, we're made of stardust, and so it's these things that they hear me say all the time. My children, they do use tablets or whatever, but I mean, it's under restriction, and they have to read books. They have to help around the house. Like, and I think that's a very important piece that I see in today's world. The children are not giving the responsibilities of like what we had from a young age of chores and things like that. And so still initiating that at a young age, making them understand that these are responsibilities that you have to have in order to have the fun, to do the good things. And so implementing that still is an important piece. And, you know, just an open line of communication because a little bit in back of, you know, for me, I didn't feel like it was a safe place in my home to speak and to feel or to talk about how I felt. And so having that is an important important part in our home now of an open line of communication and especially in you know what they're learning at schools and things like that and fortunately enough my children go to a, a Montessori school so it's not a typical education that other kids are, are getting these days I have a different breed of little ones <laughs> yeah the, the Montessori training is incredible both of my children were Montessori trained and it's just this uh, amazing way of educating and thinking from a very early on start. And so now your children have the best of both worlds, right? They have the biohacking element of it. They have the educational element of it. So it really is. They're very lucky. They're very lucky. They are. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So Violetta, throughout your journey of this whole awakening and transforming and, you know, really stepping into your power, what are some of the things that you've learned along the way that you would like to share? So much, so much. But I would say if I could pick one thing that there is there is so much power in silence. And, you know, going through that experience through a pandemic and, you know, I went through a lot of heartbreaks and, and setbacks during that time, too. I started to fall in love with silence and I... You know, when when you turn down the noise of everything, you you really come to the answer yourself, and the answer is really within you. And you you start getting some people call them downloads, some people call them whispers, but I think as women, 
we have a culture still that's very pervasive that is telling us to, not to trust ourselves, that, that's telling us that we need to ask our friends what to do. A lot of our shows that are marketed to us is all about friends and friend groups and what does this person think? We're not taught that we can trust ourselves. So uh, I learned to do that. And I think that power is within, within everyone. And if you just turn down the noise a little bit, you will come to a lot of the answers and conclusions within yourself. I love that. I love my time in silence every morning, for sure. Every evening, I have to have that. Yeah, it does make a huge difference. Absolutely. Well, I, you might not have as much silent time, right? <laughs> So funny that my husband always asks, like, why do you drive without the radio on? I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I went back to back calls all day long, and then I got tiny humans in my ear from the moment I wake up. You know, it's like, no, the car is, that's where I get most of my downloads. And it's so funny because they'll come, and then I got to start voice noting people. I'm like, okay, this just came to me. This just came to me. Yeah, right. Oh, right. while driving a car. Talk about multitasking and doing all these different things at once, but yet you're still getting the insights. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. You know, also in today's world, it's put out there that you have to be a certain way or you have to be perfect, as, especially with the two of you, right? As influencers, everything is about projecting this perfection. And Lisa and I have been experiencing it as well. And we're we're pretty authentic. We're pretty transparent. I think there was one picture that we had. Lisa does my hair. I was sitting in your seat and we took a snapshot of it to send to somebody like, we're not working. You know, we're getting beautified here. Wasn't. <laughs> right. All right. Lisa was working. <laughs> my point is, is that I thought to myself, this would be a really great post that I'm sitting here with the foils in my hair. You know, clearly I'm not a natural blonde, but it was just a moment that I had. And I think that's so important. And Violetta, what you said about the silence and, and coming into yourself and learning about yourself, but also being authentic and transparent. And I think that's what really resonates with people. And with that, and you you have all of this mess and joy in your life, you also have challenges. And we all have things that we've had to overcome. You've both talked about it. But together now, how do you find yourself handling those challenges, bouncing it off of each other? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's always good to have a soundboard and someone that you can feel safe with talking to about, you know, obviously Violetta and I have our brand Future FM, and we're also heavily involved in another project too at the moment. And Futuri Femme, you know, even though we've been making our own names in the industry by ourselves, but when you have something new that comes, people are like, well, wait, well, what's this? I don't know if I I want to be involved in this. And and that's and that's understandable. That's totally fine. And so, you know, we have to then, you know, take a step back and reassess to figure out what's going to be the best way to move forward to make, you know, the brand expand, to make people excited about what we're doing here. And, you know, to be able to, like I said, that we have this, this coherence in our relationship, that it's just like this beautiful symphony that we are able to flow with each other and to talk talk it through or be like, well, maybe you should do things a little bit different, right? And it's it's good to have that, right? And if you don't have a partner at home that, you know, having a girlfriend or, you know, another person to do that with, it's it helps you. There are so many times where we each experience setbacks and we've each had to overcome different setbacks in our lives. But now the two of you have each other as partners. So how do you think you both approach these setbacks and overcome these setbacks together? Yeah, I mean, I think we both, we, we rely on what we know to be true for us. And that is, we, we have all the tools within ourselves. We have each other, but we also have the tools. We, we understand what energy is. We understand that being in an energy of lack is not going to attract abundance. So, you know, 
staying in a high vibration. I mean, obviously, we're going to talk to each other authentically and F-bombs are going to come out and we're going to get angry. But at the same time, we'll have that moment and say, okay, let's reel it back. And, you know, we got to remember there is, you know, this was a setback for a reason. And this is, you know, just keep holding that larger vision, just using all the tools in our toolbox, you know, whether it's mindfulness or all of the biohacking tools or just speaking with a friend, but really just keeping keeping the faith and understanding that your energy is attracting what is happening to you. And, you know, so you have to stay in that high vibe energy, whether it's with yourself or definitely reminding your friend and your partner that we got to stay in that energy to keep moving forward. Yeah. Wendy and I kind of do the same thing. We throw a bunch of F-bombs around and whoever feels more strongly about it wins. You know, <laughs> what do but, we say, Lisa? We say we speak truck driver language. Yeah, fluently. Yeah. Yeah. Fluent. It's, fluently. it's French. Right. 100%. 100%. And Colette knows a couple of Greek curse words by now. She definitely. <laughs> she knows. She knows them for sure. Many we That's awesome. <laughs> so if people are looking to connect with each of you or together... How do they find you? Yeah, I mean, you could go to futurifem.com. Definitely, you, you could sign, if you want to collab with us, sign up at futurifem.com. There's a contact form to collab with us. Connect with us at futurifem on Instagram. On Instagram, as me and my health space, I'm at house of V, H A U S of V. And my photography is my name.com. And my name, uh, Violetta Markelu dot photo on Instagram as well. The to find the website, your name is spelled a little interesting. So it's F U T U R I Futuri and then Fem F E M M E dot com. And then my personal handle for Instagram is Colette C O L E T T E dot Biohacking Mama. And then I have www dot Biohackingmama dot com. It's always good to connect with everyone, right? So we're here at what we're doing. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We've really enjoyed talking with you. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. We were looking forward to it for a long time. And we're we're big fans of you guys. And of course, your product is amazing. I use it almost daily. <laughs> I've given it to several friends. <laughs> Thank yeah, we you. see your sales coming in all the time. Thank you <laughs> yeah. for that. Both of you, actually. Yeah, you both yeah. are amazing. We love when we see you guys doing posts and putting the drops in your mouth. And <laughs> it just brings us a smile to our face. And like we say, it's, you know, it's one drop at a time. And that's with everything in life. You know, you just have to approach everything one thing at a time. And the more you start to spread the word of whatever it is that you're spreading, the more people will hear. And Violetta, I think you said it best, you know, you just have to keep it at a high vibration. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the C3 podcast. Find past episodes and subscribe on our website, codehealthshop.com or Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and YouTube. The Code Girls appreciate discussing conscious living with inspiring guests who make a difference. Remember, conscious living starts with conscious conversations. Until next time, be intentional, stay inspired, practice gratitude, be well, and feel the drop.